Hi there guys, welcome to Explosive Discharge. Now if you've been watching our Harry Popper Variac videos, uh, you'll see we picked some stuff, stuff up at the boot sale. And uh, some of those things are solid state relays. Let's take a quick look at here. So, um, quite simple to use really. You put your mains input in here, and then your load on there, and then the other side of the load back through to neutral. And then you put plus uh, some positive DC voltage across that, uh, 3 to 15 volts in the case of this, and um, it will switch on and conduct current. And when you take the input away, it won't. So these usually work by switching at the lowest possible current. So if you imagine your sine wave, when the, when the current or, or the voltage, depending on what type of load it is, crosses through zero, then that's when the switch will actually happen. So this is quite a small 12 amp one, and this is a slightly bigger 25 amp 600 volt one. So we may use this for the app at the Variac, and uh, we've got a very similar one on the input. So I'll put those to one side, because with those we got... So these are actually programmable logic controller modules, and we got all of these, the solid state relays and the other solid state relay for a fiver at the boot sale, so absolute steal. Um, we've got a few different types of module here. This one is a uh, power supply module, so 240 volts in, 12 volts out. Uh, this one here is sort of the brains of the operation. That's the actual PLC controller and it's got some digital and analog inputs and relay outputs. Uh, this is a communications module and it connects via serial to this little thing, which is a, that's a SIM card slot and this is actually a GSM or possibly even GPRS modem. So that can, in theory, send things over the internet, send commands and updates over the internet, and I know for a fact it can send text messages. And finally, we've got this uh, relay expansion module. So there's a, there's a few more inputs and a few more outputs, and you can connect them all together. So we're using these cables and daisy chain them across. I've not got quite enough cables to connect all of them up, but we can have a play with a few of them. So typically these will be used for industrial installations. They're all uh, all DIN mountable, which I quite like. Even the uh, even the GSM uh, modem. Uh, they'll be used in industrial environment. Things like uh, pumping stations. So we'll start with the power supply first. You can see we've got input of 100 to 240 volts. 12 volts, 2.1 amps out, and this is the PS12 25 watt. And all of these uh, modules, they're all part of the Millennium 3 series by a company called Cruze. Uh, I've not heard of them before, but they seem they seem to be alright. So on the back here, this looks like a fairly good, well-designed PCB, to be honest. There's some isolation around there. We've got an opto isolator. And it's just a... Um, Fairly decent switch mode power supply, really. We've got our uh, Nikki Kong caps. Next, we've got the uh, CD12. This is the actual brains of it, the actual logic controller. Uh, it's got so four digital inputs and four analog or digital inputs, 12 volt power in, and then there's four uh, relay outputs at the bottom. And there's this little, uh, I think it's a 16x4 character LCD. And we've got a few buttons. You can set your programs up to use A and B and plus and minus. So the screen module actually pops off. Not a whole lot to see here, just really a blob under that bit of epoxy. In the middle of it all we've got a 80 mega 1 to 8 processor. So this is, um, this is actually used on one of the smaller Arduinos. So in theory you could put your own firmware on it if you really wanted to, but... I mean, we're just going to use it with the uh, with the PLC programming software. Uh, looks like an input regulator there. The diode for the input for a bit of protection. A couple of filter caps. We've got a backup battery, and all of the uh, all of the relays on the outputs. The feature of interest on this is really going to be this port, but we're going to come back to that at the end. We're going to have a go at uh, looking at the data sheets for the chip and trying to figure out what the pinout is. This uh, little relay and digital expansion box is very much the same. It is a slightly different PCB, which is interesting. And this, they've got this header here. No number of pins, so maybe you can put an LCD on this one as well. 
yeah, slightly different input design. They've got the uh, they've got an input mold there by the looks of it. Um, same chip, 80 mega one to eight. Yeah, very very similar. Second from last is the M3 mod. That's all this one is. That's actually quite a bare board. This one. There's the uh, pins for the output connector. Um, looks like a voltage regulator. Slightly different chip. This is an 80 mega 84. So this communications module is, seems fairly nicely built. It's got a serial port, a nice sturdy locking uh, power connector for the DC input, um, and a normal polarity SMA connector on the back for the antenna, and the SIM card slot. So let's pop it open and have a look inside. There we go. Wow. Wireless CPU from OpenAT. A little tiny microcontroller there that probably interfaces between the serial port and the CPU. Looks like there's space to fit potentially a bigger microprocessor and memory there. This is all power supply. Uh, we've already managed to get hold of the software and um, unfortunately you can't just plug that straight in because they're all male, both sides. So I thought, hey, anything's worth a try. I made up this little pass-through connector, female to female. Plugged it all in, and oh. So if we use the software to connect to COM1 and click test, pay attention to the LEDs here, so I'm going to click test. See, they're both flashed, but we're getting an error that um, it's not talking back. So if you disconnect it and click test, you can see only one flashes and it's flashing at a different rate. So that would kind of indicate that this thing is talking back, but it's obviously not working. So let's dig a little bit deeper. Serial connectors, the logic's actually uh, plus and minus 12 volts. It's, uh, I think it's called bipolar logic. And um, these USB powered, obviously they're bus powered, five volts, and I think some of them may have uh, like a boost converter in them. I think some of these cheaper ones just have 5 volt logic output. So that may, may be one reason why it's not talking. I actually tried putting a serial port card in a desktop PC and trying this and it was exactly the same, still didn't work. So we're going to dig deeper. In the spirit of working with what we've already got, you might look at this and just think, oh, so there's 6 pins there, and there's 9 pins there, and there's just six, 6 wires connecting between them straight through. It's quite a small little connector. So in here we've got our serial cable in, there's a little capacitor, a little diode, a couple of resistors and two ICs that go out to this 6 pin connector. Now I would believe that these are uh, logic level translation chips like the, uh, the MAX232, but uh, the MAX232 has got more pins so I don't think these are. If you use a multimeter and buzz these pins out to the pin out, you can quite easily buzz out which one's ground and ignore that one. and. Uh, find your TX and RX and they're actually the middle two and if you follow those traces round one goes to one chip and the other goes to the other chip and then there's outputs from those that go to this so they definitely appear to be translating the TX and RX signals read the chip it's a Atmel 80 mega 64 so to Google we'll pull up the data sheet and find the pinout there's positive and negative in so good starting point to try and find your ground is take the ground of the power and try and buzz it out to somewhere on the PCB so we can see here that the ground is connected to this big ground pool all across the board which is nice and handy and then we can go through each one of these pins on the connector until we find continuity so something to watch out for with these screw terminals is uh, you can see we haven't got continuity there, but if I go in from the side, we have. So when the screw's not fully done up, it's actually isolated from the bottom. Okay, so the pin in this corner here is the ground. Move on to the next pin. We'll try that out. So I'm going to go opposite one and just swipe across the pins on the microcontroller. Okay, so we can see something there. So that is one, two, three, four. It's the fifth one in from the bottom left hand corner of the chip and if we look at the data sheet we pin 21 and it's VCC so this pin here 
is the positive logic voltage which is probably 5 volts next one along ok we've got a connection there so that's the transmit pin of our microcontroller there so that's transmitting out to the computer so let's have another look at this one here because we've got a reading there and next to the TXD one across is RXD so that's one, two, three, four, five, six here. You can see we've got a couple of hundred ohms there. So if we try and have a little look around. Ah. So this pin comes out and goes between these two resistors. It looks like we've got a pull up there. That's going up to positive voltage. And then if we go from the other side of this resistor back to the chip. Sure enough, this one goes through a couple of resistors and that is our RXD of the chip, so that's receiving data from the computer. This is the top of the module and we're looking into this little port. And that pin there is the transmit of the chip, so that's the chip transmitting out to the computer. The receive is the chip receiving from the computer. VCC is the uh, uh, logic level voltage and what's powering the chip, so it's probably 5 volts, we can power that up and have a look in a tick and ground is obviously ground and these two are of unknown function what we're going to try next is using one of these uh, USB TTL uh, serial port adapters this one's got a FTDI chip on it we're going to connect the ground from this to the ground of the board, we can do that now actually we're going to connect the RX to the TX and vice versa the TX to the RX. I think this one's COM2 and we'll click test. Connection successful. So there we go, that seems like it's works. We'll um, put this back together again and uh, probably mount it up on a little bit of strip board. So this is actually what I've ended up making. Um, quite simple, I've just copied that circuit diagram across with the uh, Pin out for my serial converter. Pop that in the socket. USB converter ball plugged in there. And we'll plug the USB cable into that. And give the PLC a bit of power. See there that it's come on. Click test. Connection successful. So, okay, we'll hit OK. Uh, we can read in the controller. Now, this all read the contents, read the program that's in the controller into the computer and it'll allow us to edit the program so you can see this is what I'd just been playing with uh, the numbers on the LCD are actually one of the analog inputs um, if we get rid of that digital input so it's just a case of dragging and dropping your digital inputs on here and your outputs over here then connecting up whatever blobs you want in between. So let's get rid of some of these. And this, if this metronome is just like a, a one-second pulse, uh, so it's like a one-second latching on/off. Sorry. So if we just connect that to the output, and we do controller uh, right to the controller, it will just reset the controller. Click OK. Click OK. Click OK. Send the program out to the controller. And there we go, right successful. So if we go back to the controller, we can unplug this. Uh, hit escape. Uh, go to run, OK. Run program. And if you can hear that. That's our relay clicking on and off. So we've we've managed to program the controller. Stop that again. There we go. So you can write whatever programs you like in sort of a flowchart layout, or you can do do it as a ladder layout and upload it or with a couple of quid's worth of programming cable. That'll save you eighty or ninety pounds, or how much the one on RS was. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. An interesting sort of different topic, looking at some PLCs. And we'll probably hang on to these and might even might even use them for the Variac controller. Make it a bit more stupid. Catch you later.